literally is a genius and an artist. And we're celebrating art forms on the show today. Uh, Pumlani Pikoli is a multimedia journalist. He's an author and an artist who was born in Zimbabwe to exile parents. His debut book, titled The Fortuitous State of Severity, was created in collaboration with a number of illustrators and is an apology and an anthology of uh, short stories uh, based on his personal life experience. And it is incredible. Dark but incredible. Welcome to The Loft. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So what inspired such a novel? Um, well, yeah, the, the collection of short stories was kind of like, it, it came from like a, a place where I was forced to sort of r write or I was, I was being asked to journal and I didn't want to journal. Mm -hmm. So I decided to create like fictional stories and then that ended up being like stitched together and, 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 and self-published mm. in, in 2016. The media are probably sucking themselves into a bad habit of trying to engage you on the fact that you wrote these stories while you were inside trying to work on some mental health issues. Um, yeah. and, and I just think that that's almost so irrelevant because what came out of this and the reason why you, uh, you published it was just because all those stories needed to be shared. Yeah. What an interesting story. Tell us about how the, the space you were in when you were writing this book. So I was just I was essentially um, in a in, in a psych clinic um, for about three weeks, and uh, I was supposed to be sort of um, getting therapy. And mm -hmm. then um, I mean I was getting therapy, not supposed to. Um, to my psychologist, I was I was listening to you. <laughs> um, so like yeah, I was I was getting therapy, and and a part of it was journaling. Yeah. And instead of journaling, I decided to to write. Yeah. And I had had a friend on the other side of the world who was like, mm. you know, I was sharing like all the experiences and stuff. And mm. so I started writing these stories and sending sending them to him. And and yeah, he dug them, and like it was it was cool. So I just right. carried on. So tell me about the stories that are in here. How many stories are there? What stories do they tell? Um, I, yo, I didn't count. I'm, I'm a writer. I'm not a counter. Um, <laughs> I can go through the index, you know. I can go count them all. But tell me about yeah. some of your favorite stories that are in here. I mean, um, so, the stories that try to tell. Yeah. So essentially, uh, you know, the book is, is is around like you know, class issues of 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 race, uh, um, of, of of gender interactions, I guess, between man, um, men and women, uh, you know, language insecurities. There's 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 quite a bit of. Um, you know, and also deals with with, with mental health, and so mm. some of my favorite stories. I, I shouldn't say mm. some, well, I don't, like you'd kick me off the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to stay here. Like, okay. <laughs> I really want to have this conversation and give the book. Okay, like, so so they go deep, right? These stories go deep. There's yeah. some real, real interesting stories on you. Are they all <laughs> personal experiences of yours that were that were fictionalized to kind of retell that were separate to you, or are they completely separate to who you are as a person? This, I, I still need to figure out how to answer this question properly. Um, and I'm going to cop out and just quote Gabriel Garcia Marquez um, and say, nothing I've ever written is untrue. Okay. So all these stories have got elements of your life in it. <laughs> social media seems to be a theme of that. Was that something huge, that contributed huge. towards your depression? Was having to deal with the impact of social media in the world that we live in today? Well, I mean, yeah, I think, I mean, there's a lot of mitiga mitigating circumstances that, that contributes to, 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 mental, mm. to mental illness. And, um, and so uh, there's a lot of environmental sort of influences. And I think, you know, the way in which we... Uh, use and access technology um, can definitely play a role. So mm. I think I use that um, quite quite actively throughout the, the the book because it's such an active agent of yeah. communication at the moment. Yeah, I suffer from mental illness. I'm, I've got uh, yeah, whatever. Don't have to go through all the details, but I mean, a lot of young men don't like talking about stuff like this. It seems to be sort of taboo. Um, yeah. And I'm so inspired by the fact that you've got this journey to be able to share these stories. What has been mm. your experience of talking about mental illness as a young South African at the moment? Have you seen it? Quite a taboo thing. Has your family been responding okay? Yeah, like my my family, like my family are lit. Like I come from, like my parents are like liberal conservatives, and for and like and they're pretty progressive, in a, in a lot of the ways. And so I I, I was lucky um, in that regard. And also I've been in therapy since I was like seven. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I've been lucky and privileged in, in in a lot of ways. And so for me to be able to speak about mental illness has been sort of I've been allowed to do it for so long mm -hmm. that by the time like people were like, oh, that's a serious thing. You weren't mm. just joking about being depressed on yeah, Facebody yeah. like everybody else. Oh, it wasn't a crazy home which people think it means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it really inspired a lot of people. Like yeah. I remember posting on Instagram just being like, yo, like 
I've been stuck in this drawn for two weeks, and it was the day before, like, Dela, so... Um, and, like, I was lucky I got a pass out and saw Dela, so... Um, and then I, I posted on Instagram, and everybody responded, like, yeah. the responses were overwhelming, yeah. like... You forget um, that you, you're a voice to people who feel like they don't have one, so if you open yeah. up something about this thing, everyone's like, cool, I can too, you know? And yeah, share exactly, stories. and that's the, the, that's the killer, sorry, just, like, yeah. it's, the, it's the isolation of it all that I think mm. that, that, that really, like, gets to people, and, and that's what we should be trying to yeah. sort of you know, get, get around each other in, in real ways. So the title of the book is on the screen at the moment. I wanted to talk about it because it, uh, just if you can briefly in a sentence tell us why such a complicated name <laughs> for a book that's trying to get people to read, man. <laughs> so, um, you know, in a sentence, um, the fact you say the severity, it was just like I, I just found it. I was, I was in, the, in, 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 the, in the clinic and I was looking around me and I had seen all these like sort of broken people and whatever and I felt broken and I was, and I was just kind of like, yo, why do we take life so seriously? Mm -hmm. How can I say that in the most uptight way that will make people believe I can speak English? Yeah, okay. And then, <laughs> so, uh, the fascist state of severity was born. Okay, I see. It's yeah. a beautiful, beautiful read. I don't know, South Africans, if you have got a chance, the collaborations with the il illustrators that are in here as well, they all found their own unique stories to be able to share through the stories that you obviously provided them. They then started to draw about it, and it's incredible. So, although it is sometimes, some of the stories can be quite dark, and I counted the 21 of them, <laughs> and there are some real stories that perhaps you can identify with in here as well. So, if you really do feel like you want to support South African liter literature and see some of these short stories that are in here. Perhaps you've got an attention span like me of about five seconds. Read the short stories. It's an easy way to get into some incredible literature and it's available, obviously, at the moment. So, Pumlani, thanks for coming to join us, dude. Thank you for having yeah, me. And thanks for opening up about this issue. I hope more young South Africans can talk more about their own issues as well and perhaps put short stories together with interesting titles. All right? We'll see you after the break. <laughs>